Hello everybody and welcome to our second monthly vlog. Um, this month we're going to be talking about children's attendance to the dentist, uh, the one million patients that couldn't access an NHS dentist and tooth whitening. So uh, first up, children's, atten children's attendance to the dentist. Um, a study this month carried out by the Faculty of Dental Surgery found that just over half, 58% of children aged one to four um, didn't see an NHS dentist last year. So there are probably multiple reasons for this and there will be thousands of dentists and dental professionals uh, encouraging children to visit their local dentist and their local practice, but th this does seem to be a bit of an ongoing trend. Um, for years now we've been talking about tooth extractions being the main reason that children attend the dentist, um, or sorry, that children attend the, uh, are admitted to hospital. So what can we do to tackle the issue, um, get children brushing their teeth, uh, looking after their oral health and understanding the importance of visiting the dentist? But we don't actually have to look too far to find ways to solve this problem. Um, Scotland has had great success with its Child Smiles scheme, uh, which allows dental professionals and dentists to go out, visit nurseries, visit primary schools, and teach children about the importance of their oral health and teach them how to brush their teeth. Um, these are skills that can last a lifetime, and those children can even go home and pass the message on to, to their families. Um, and Wales has followed suit, they've got a similar scheme called Design to Smile uh, and both of these schemes are showing success rates uh, in Wales and Scotland. So why hasn't England launched its own scheme? Well, Sarah Hurley and the Office of CDO um, has launched Smile for Life, but this hasn't come with any extra funding for dentists or practices, and nor is it really a scheme that's encouraging anything new. Um, all it really is, is a badge the NHS can add to current schemes that are already happening around England. So what I think um, we need to see is the Office of CDO being a little bit more proactive, um, offering more money for practices willing to reach out to their communities um, in, in their own time under the Smile for Life campaign. For Smile for Life to be offering toothbrushing lessons to practices, um, sorry, toothbrushing lessons for in a practice near uh, the children, and for practices to receive extra funding for this, um, if Scotland and Wales have proven successes success rates for this, then surely children in England can only benefit. Uh, another one of the headlines that caught the national media's attention was the one million patients who were unable to access an NHS dentist over the last year. We uh, decided to speak to Henrik Ovegaard Nielsen from the BDA um, to find out what the main issue is. Well the real issue is that, there are, uh, is that there are a lot of practices actually not having the capacity to see more patients. And the reason for that is that recruitment and retention is getting much much more difficult. NHS dentists are leaving the NHS in droves. Uh, the survey we've done uh, states that about 60% of dentists want to leave uh, dentistry within the next five years and the amount, the number of dentists, NHS dentists, are much larger uh, wanting to leave than the number of private dentists. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, what we need is to make NHS dentistry attractive to dentists again. That's the problem. Everybody hates the, the present contract. And the problem with the, with the prototypes is that that is not fit for purpose yet. What we need is for the government actually to, uh, well, frankly, get their finger out and do something about it. Uh, we need the contract reform to be attractive to dentists to want to work in the NHS again. And the way to do that, in my opinion, is very clearly that dentists need to have that little bit more time to spend with their patients. That's what we've all been trained to do, that's what we all want to do, but at the moment we've got an NSS contract that's full of tick boxes and targets and we are pressurised on time all the time and people get more and more stressed, more and more burned out and we've got surveys that show that very clearly as well. You mentioned more time with patients but that would actually reduce the access to NHS dentists, so what is the solution? The solution is for, for making it, giving us that little bit more time and thereby making NHS dentistry attractive again. 
Therefore, you would have more dentists wanting to work in the NHS. That's the solution. At the moment, you've got contracts being handed back left, right and centre. We hear it all the time. We've had two contracts handed back uh, in Norfolk. We had a £1.4 million pound contract uh, handed back uh, in, in Stockton on Tees. Uh, and actually, the last thing I heard was that the problem is coming in London as well. There was a, a practice in Zone 2 in London, so in central London, a practice was offering several thousand pounds of go to hello to get an associate. That is unheard of, and it's just getting worse. The BDA is also asking for more money to be invested into NHS dentistry. Where should this money be invested? Well, I hope it goes towards dentists having that little bit more time, because that means that dentists will be able to treat fewer patients. So, as you said before, it's very clear that if, if we're going to treat the same number of patients, we need more dentists. So, you know, from my perspective, it would be great if dentists got paid more money, and I would work for that uh, very tirelessly. And we have worked for that tirelessly. Uh, we have failed, uh, but we have worked tirelessly for it for a number of years. But the money that the government needs to spend right now is actually to hire more dentists to see the same number of patients. So each patient each patient will get more time. What we have seen is that the amount of money the government spends per patient has gone down by about 14% over the last five years. And what we are telling politicians and Department of Health is that they need to spend that 14% more money. We need to go back to the amount of money that's spent per patient about five years ago. Then that would make it attractive for dentists again to try and join the NHS and then we would be able to treat more patients and stop having a million people not being able to find an NHS dentist. And can I just say, the million people that are trying to find an NHS dentist, those patients are not the ones that need a standard checkup and really don't have any problems. A lot of those people have got toothache. A lot of those people are in pain and they can't find an NHS dentist. And that's the reason why we end up with these terrible stories about people pulling out their own teeth. And we've got Dentaid, uh, again, uh, setting up surgeries all over the country. Dentaid works in Africa. They're a charity. And all due respect to Dentaid, they do a great job. But frankly, in the 21st century, in this country, we shouldn't rely on uh, charities to sort people out when they go too thick. There seems to be an ever-diminishing pool of dentists uh, in the UK. Post-Brexit, how do we encourage qualified dentists from outside the UK uh, to come and work here? Well, I, I'm not sure there are fewer dentists. As I mean, they, they, the GTC are claiming, uh, that, or clearly stating that there are more dentists now on the register than there has been before. So uh, it's not like we've got fewer dentists. I think there are, there are several problems for the NHS. I think there are several problems generally. One is that, that younger dentists now are not uh, working the same way as people from my generation did, where it was five, five and a half days a week and we were, we were sort of working hard all the time. I think younger people are much more into uh, a more of a work-life balance, uh, more of a portfolio career, which I think is, is, is great. But obviously that means that generally they're, they're not treating as many patients. Uh, the problem for the NHS, very clearly, is that people, if you talk to young dentists today, they are all saying, you know, we really don't want to work in the NHS, we want to do private work instead. And what we see when people do private work is not that they're doing it to earn more money. The reason they're doing it is that they can spend more time with their patients. And that's what we need to replicate in the NHS. We need that time to spend with the patient. Uh, and then I don't think we will be relying so much on, on foreign dentists uh, coming to the UK. I think also, uh, one thing is you have, have sort of Western European dentists uh, coming here, I, I haven't got a problem with, but I do have a bit of a problem with us um, enticing dentists from uh, other countries, where India, uh, the, the Eastern European countries, where those countries have paid for those dentists to be trained and then we more or less steal them uh, to come here. What the government needs to do is actually to sort out uh, the workforce issue and probably uh, if, if, if we do feel that there are too few dentists, we need to train some more dentists in this country. But at the moment it's cheaper for the government to steal them from other countries and I don't think that's reasonable uh, because those countries actually need those dentists themselves. Henrik, thank you for your time.
Thank you. And finally, last week we heard calls from the British Dental Bleaching Society to ban over-the-counter tooth whitening kits. So a study published in the BDJ found over-the-counter whitening kits had less of a whitening effect on teeth than saline, whilst others contain dangerously high levels of hydrogen peroxide. So this, this study doesn't really highlight anything that we didn't already know, but what it does mean is that we now have a scientific study that helps prove these kits are dangerous and ineffective. So whether you're offering whitening at your practice or you're not, um, I think it is a dental professional's and a dentist's duty to educate patients about their oral health. Um, so I would encourage all practices to include uh, a poster or a notice about drawing attention to the study in the waiting room or just have a quick chat with the patient in the surgery. You never know, this, this quick chat might uh, stop that patient from using the kits which could seriously harm their gums and teeth. And you may even uh, create an opportunity to promote some of the treatments that you're already offering in the practice that your patients didn't already know about. So that's everything from us for now. Uh, thank you for watching and um, we'll see you next month. Thanks very much.